Representative Mike Pitts, folks. Thanks, Mike. Folks, my hands are a little bit cold, <laughs> but they're not dead. <laughs> not yet. <laughs> okay. Good job. Crowd is getting bigger. Yeah. Yeah. Coming Look out. around. All right. Look around at, the, at the Second Amendment activists to your left and your right. Thank you all for coming here. Our uh, our next speaker was scheduled to be uh, Senator Lee Bright. Is, is the senator right here yet? Right here. There we go. Woo! Let me tell you about Senator Bright. I don't know if you've ever heard the phrase Tea Party Darling before, <laughs> but uh, Senator Bright was elected in 2009. He sponsored the Firearms Freedom Act a couple of times now. Okay. Uh, Marksmanship in Schools Bill. Yes. Second Amendment Preservation Act. And he's co-sponsor of the Firearms Liberty Act and bills to allow CWP carry, CWP carry on school grounds. So, Good to be here today with so many patriots. People always ask me, you know, how many of these events I go to, and I said, well, if you can get enough patriots there, I'm coming to all of them. <laughs> and it's uh, it's great to be here today with you. I uh, was watching a little bit of Fox News last night, and uh, was hearing a little bit about some of the testimony on the uh, on what happened with uh, obviously what happened in Sandy Hook was a tragedy. And I was, uh, I was watching uh, our current U.S. Senator Lindsey Graham explain that the Second Amendment was meant for reasonable purposes, and it was not meant to fight our government. What an idiot! <laughs> but then, but then I read about what Noah Webster said. And Noah Webster said, I'm, I'm going to read this so I don't mess it up because the words are so good, I don't want to paraphrase. <laughs> Before a standing army can rule, the people must be disarmed. As they are almost in every kingdom in Europe, the supreme power in America cannot enforce unjust laws by the sword because the whole body of the people are armed and constitute a force superior to any band of regular troops that can be or in any pretense raised in the United States. Now let's think about that. Our founders knew that governments get out of control. Yep. Yep. Throughout history, let, these folks that get elected, they get elected because they get 50% plus one vote. And a lot of them are very addicted to power. Oh, yeah. And that amount of power they want to yield control over your lives with. And some of us say, we're not going to let you do it. Woo! Yeah. And their response is force. And the only thing that can stop that force, I'm going to tell you, I, I was worried about my country when, when I, the current regime got four more years. Yeah. 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 I, I was very fearful for my country because I was afraid that maybe I was the only one. <laughs> and, and then I think Obama kind of pushed it too far. I mean, here's a man, here's a man who says that if a child survives an abortion, put it in a keeping room and let it die. And has the hypocrisy to tell us how much he cares about children. And surround him now, I'm, a liar. Sure cares, I'm sure he cares about his own children. I'll never doubt that. Yes, sir. But I sure don't trust him with mine. You got Amen. that right. Amen. Our country is turned upside down. My daughter was in a cheerleading competition over here at USC, okay? They decided that my wife's pocketbook needed to be searched thoroughly to make sure she wasn't a terrorist. I mean, they were searching all these women's pocketbooks, but yet this USC has a picture of Bill Ayers on the wall. They sent a, a professor comes from there to tell us that we can't nullify. Yes, sir. Yeah, well, we, we can nullify. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, 
the, the federal government works for us, and, and people talk about secession, the states are fed up with them. We don't need to secede, they just need to straighten out. Amen. Yeah. That's right. Wow. All right. Barack Obama has as much care for the Constitution yes. as Al Capone had for Prohibition. Amen. Right. Amen. That's right. Treasonous. We want to use, and I said this at the last round, but we want to make sure that we use the 10th Amendment, the 9th and 10th Amendment, to protect our people. Because the federal government is out of control. And we want to use the 10th Amendment to protect the Bill of Rights. But if we have to, we will use the Second Amendment to protect them. You got it. Wholeheartedly. We want to be a peaceful people, but we can't sacrifice liberty for peace. Yes. And it's got to come to the point. I mean, this is a Friday. It's, it's chilly out here. We've got we've got to have the crowds here, but you've got everybody's got an email list. That's right. And, and I, I I've talked to plenty of soldiers, and these soldiers don't much like what's going on with Obama. Amen. Amen. I mean, these are our troops. These are our yes. family members. And I just don't think he'll have federal troops come down here to South Carolina. <laughs> I just don't see that happening. Yes, sir. So what we've got to do, with like any other bullies, we've got to punch him in the nose. Amen. Amen. And how you punch him in the nose is say, we're not going to do it. The man has never had a challenge. Everything's been handed to him. There you go. We don't know how his education was paid for, but it looks like it was handed to him, but we can't find out. He's never had to fight for anything. We have elected people to go up to D.C. and roll over. Now, we've got some congressmen up there some congressmen up there that are standing firm, but we're in a fight. We're in an absolute fight. Yes. And this is a guy, there is no common ground. Amen. And our guys up in Washington that keep searching for common ground and compromise, it's going to lead to nothing but failure and loss of liberty. Vote them out! No we're, guts! We need to vote them out, primary them out, and we need our state officials to stand up. Yes. Yeah. We could not even get the nullification of the NDAA bill where they can come out and lock up American citizens without due process. We can't even get that out of the Judiciary Committee. We have a senator from Orangeburg that threatened it with a minority report. Yeah, right. I mean, you think about that. I mean, we can't even get it out of the Judiciary Committee. And the rest of these folks that I serve with, a lot of Republican colleagues, they think we're all crazy. Good. I mean, they were making comments about the black helicopter crowd and about all these folks that believe in all these conspiracies. And I told the senator from Orangeburg, I said, well, let me tell you this. When they come for you, you're going to want those crowds defending your rights Amen. just like they're trying to defend Amen. them. That's yeah. right. Yeah. These same people that the mainstream media love to scoff at are the first ones in line to go out and defend these liberties abroad. But yet we're, getting, we're losing them here. We are losing our liberties here. We have got enough natural resources if we'll just get our own. We don't need to be involved in all these other conflicts. That's right. Well, we've got a big enough conflict Amen. here. Yes. And we are under assault here like never before. That's right. And it's up to what y'all do, because you know one politician with a microphone can't do much at all. I mean, all we can do is yell from the mountaintops. <laughs> but if you guys get involved, get engaged, I mean, I, we had a gun show in Columbia. We had a rally here, had a great turnout, but there was still a gun show in Columbia, and it was packed. Thousands of people were there. Also in Greenville. Yeah, they, they were packed there, but you can't even get inside. The American people know what's going on. And I'm sick and tired of it with you. So let's make our stand. Let's tell them we're not going to put up with it anymore, but we need to wake up the people that are still sleeping. Because we've got a country to save, and we don't want to be the generation that lost it for our children and our grandchildren. That's right. That's right. And, and I, want to, I want to leave it with one thing about the debt and what's going on right now. We have taxation without representation. That's right. Yes, we do. Because we've got people that are not yet born that are going to be straddled with the debt that these folks up in Washington are putting on them right now. That's right. The chains of debt are going to be on their back if we don't make a stand. So there may be some tough times. There may be some federal programs that might be cut. But I'd rather have federal programs cut than my liberty taken away. Yes. That's, right. That's right. That's right. That is correct. We need to stop taking their money. Well, I, I tell you what, they, they come down here and basically have all the mandates. I talked with a guy in the hospital industry who was telling me, he said, I don't even know if Medicaid's a positive thing. He said, because of the constraints and what they put on it, we might have just funded ourselves. Yeah. 
Right. Yeah. I mean, anything the government gets involved in, they don't. That, it's just it's primed for waste and abuse. I, I say give the private sector. You know, I ask people when I go around and speak around the state. I said, I'm only uh, 43 years old, so we we've had Medicaid my entire life. But the question I've always had is, what did you guys do with the bodies? And everybody gets that blank stare on their face. And that's why obviously you had to burn them or something because nobody could survive without federal government health care. <laughs> and, and how did people learn to read? Because we didn't have a Department of Education prior to 1980. <laughs> and, and how on earth, how on earth did we were able to breathe air and drink water before Nixon and, and the EPA? Yeah. Yeah. That's right. So, I mean, enough's enough. Let's draw a line in the sand say no more. Not only are you not going to take more of our freedom, but we're going to take some of it back. Amen. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you.